Thank you. It was most difficult for me to look in their eyes. Just to look them in their eyes as they were telling me their stories of the brutalities that they experienced as women who were victims of sexual violence, as prisoners of war in camps who were tortured and stripped of their humanity. Knowing fully well that we had not done enough for them and knowing fully well that we had failed many of them. And when people ask me what was my biggest regret as president or what I consider to be my biggest failure is actually the fact that I wasn't able to do much to help the victims of war and to help those who are still looking for their loved ones. And just before the conference started, we were discussing that Ukraine and here in Bucha, you're looking for those who are missing from the war. And in Croatia, we still have 1,423 families who have not found their closures. And when I think about the similarities, being so emotional today, driving through Bucha, evoking memories of places like Škabrnja in Croatia, or Vukovar, or Srebrenica, I cannot think back, cannot but think back to those families. And the words of a very well-known song here in Ukraine that sings about parents who wait for their sons to return. And the tired father and the gray-haired mother are waiting for their son and his solace was gone. 123 families looking for their loved ones so many years after the war. And this is our collective obligation today, to find justice, to find peace, to find closure. When I listen to the stories of the horrible atrocities uh, of what the victims of war went through, it wasn't just about unimaginable physical suffering. It wasn't just about pain, torture, cruelty. It was also about guilt, shame, and the fact that the victims were stripped of their dignity. They were not just tortured, they were humiliated in the eyes of the others, mostly in the eyes of their families. They were stigmatized sometimes by their communities, faced with unbearable choices such as the women in Vukovar, the so-called comfort women, who were told to choose their rapist or they would be gang raped. Or the POWs who went through unimaginable suffering, having to acknowledge the regime, the validity of the regime that stripped them of their human dignity. So bearing that stigma, the stigma of being stripped of the human dignity is another aspect that we have to take care of when we talk about the crimes that have been committed here. And Bucha, a symbol of atrocities against civilians, I don't really know what crime it hasn't really experienced. Crimes that had no military purpose, that had no military justification. Crimes that were part of deliberate policy designed to terrify, to discourage, to break morale, to break people's will and resistance. Deliberate policy of scorched earth designed to carry out ethnic cleansing, zachistka. It goes against international law. It goes against all conventions. It goes against the rules of war and it goes against the decency of a human being. What we have seen in Bucha and what we have seen in this war is a horrible concept, a weaponization of people, a weaponization of displaced persons, of refugees, weaponization of human suffering 
to break the will and the morale to fight and secures not just one's freedom, but one's dignity as well. So today, and always, as international community, we have to stand united and assume collective responsibility to put an end to impunity for crimes committed by Russia and any other aggressor. We have to ensure full accountability. And here, I'd like to make three important points. First, the approach has to be a victim-centered approach. We have to provide for justice, for compensation, for victims and their families, but also for rehabilitation, to restore their dignity, to provide healing for victim, victims, for families, and for communities. Second, and most important probably, there can be no selective justice. One of the mistakes that we made in Croatia is going ahead with abolition. We did not prosecute so many perpetrators, including for victims of sexual violence, mostly women, children, but also men. So when I talk to so many women who were trying to tell their stories, to acknowledge the facts to themselves, to their families, to the communities. They were telling me how today they walk the streets of Croatian towns, facing their violators, and sometimes being called all sorts of names and humiliated and victimized all over again. No crime should go unpunished. Second, in that respect, no perpetrator should go unpunished. Selecting crimes or selecting perpetrators is absolutely unacceptable. It has to be a comprehensive approach. No select structures should be prosecuted. Every individual involved in creating ideologies of extension, expansion, elimination, all those involved in planning, organizing, ordering, and inciting, executing, or even allowing for crimes must be held accountable. And that includes command structures and political and ideological leadership. Those responsible up to the highest levels should be held accountable. Which leads me to my third point today. Obviously, international criminal justice so far has been rather sketchy. Yes, we have achieved great gains. We have come together. We have been building uh, international criminal courts and international criminal justice. But it's a process in the making. We have also made many mistakes and we have to use the lessons learned. And that's why Croatia is planning in June to organize a conference to exchange uh, opinion on um, how so far the international criminal justice and war crime prosecutions have worked, what mistakes we've made and how we can improve the system. We have to obviously build new structures. There are a lot of, um, the, the collective response so far has been I would dare say better than ever in terms of the ICC, the European courts, the international community reacting. We have to combine universal justice, but we also have to look at new institutions, new bodies that would prosecute crimes that are currently not within the domain of the prosecution or the jurisdiction of the existing bodies. And that, mean the crime, that means the crime of aggression which is the original and the originating crime, what has happened here in Bucha and in many other places. And to conclude, this isn't just about Ukraine only. We have to do this for the whole global community. We have to make it a standard of reaction to aggression anywhere, to atrocity crimes, war crimes, crimes against humanity, crimes against human dignity everywhere. So that 
potential perpetrators, not even their thing twice, but they don't think at all about committing crimes against civilian populations and violating international law conventions and the rule of law. Peace without justice is not peace. So again, what we're doing here today, what we're st starting is a process that will have repercussions around the world. The Bucho, the Ukraine. For Bucha, for Ukraine, for the entire world. Be guilty of a mission by not prosecuting those who are guilty of commission. Thank you.